Well, Diane, hey everyone, it's Eric, and it's time for the Icelandic thing of the day. Um, so my big adventure today was I went out to uh, Bolkin, which literally just means the book, uh, which is the uh, the famous used bookstore here in Reykjavik, um, which is kind of amazing. Uh, <laughs> it is exactly what every old secondhand bookstore uh, in your dreams has ever looked like. It's just piles and piles of books everywhere. Uh, very little uh, sense that there's a strong organizational scheme uh, to the store. Um, I'm sure if uh, I spoke better Icelandic, then I would uh, just be amazed and, and bowled over by uh, all of the stuff that's there as it is. I uh, looked at it and found some really neat stuff, but... Uh, a lot of it was also over my head just because linguistically I don't know what a lot of that stuff is. Um, they did have uh, some some nice used uh, editions of uh, the Sagas of the Icelanders and Snorri Sturluson's work. Um, and I'm really thinking that I might go back there and, and get it even though it's like $90 for, for the thing that I'm wanting to get. Uh, and I'm kind of, well, obviously, uh, you all know that I'm kind of poor. <laughs> anyway, um, so I thought I would, on the topic of books today, I thought that I'd talk a little bit about um, sagas and what you might run into if you are a uh, saga-minded person like myself going into an Icelandic secondhand bookstore. So there's uh, there was a whole section in uh, Bolkin. Um, that was devoted to um, devoted to to the Icelandic sagas, to the uh, sagas of the Icelanders. But um, so let's talk about the word saga, which is something that we've directly imported from Icelandic into English. Uh, and when we think of it, we think of it as these uh, big epic stories. Um, you know, uh, it famously gets applied uh, to like Hollywood blockbuster style uh, film trilogies. You know, the star, the saga of, of Star Wars, the the Lord of the Rings saga, all these various different kinds of sagas. That's not really what saga means, though. Um, it's a hard word to translate, really. Um, but in Iceland, it's used for everything from uh, from a fictional story to a historical account. Um, any kind of, uh, narrative form, a long narrative form, uh, can be called a saga. And so, uh, for example, in this bookstore, um, uh, there's a whole section that is, uh, uh, Island Saga, uh, or I suppose more technically, uh, correct, uh, Island Sogur, um, that's the plural. And you go and look at that and, uh, and if you're going in there expecting Vikings, you may actually be kind of surprised because there, there are sections for, like, Eastland Saga, uh, 1900 to present. Uh, and really, that's just Icelandic history. Um, it's the story of Iceland. Um, the actual uh, sagas of the Icelanders, which are the, the famous medieval prose uh, historical fiction, you could call them, uh, accounts, uh, those are all... Um, Islandiga, uh, <laughs> I just screwed that up. Uh, Islandiga, uh, so I've got a little bit of a, of a head cold thing. I don't know. Um, so, uh, those are specifically sagas of Icelanders, uh, Islandiga, as opposed to Island, which is referring to the whole thing. Um, so if you go into uh, an Icelandic bookstore, you'll find that there are sagas everywhere, things that are called saga this and saga that. Uh, um, and most of them are actually just uh, are history or are novels, are uh, any kind of uh, prose account of something. Uh, the things that we think of when we think of Icelandic sagas, uh, these medieval stories, that's a very specific subset of of all of fictional works and so if you uh go in there as i as i almost did and you go and you see wow there's so much so many iceland sagas that's amazing you'll quickly realize that oh there's a lot of books about icelandic history 
that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the Middle Ages or, or Vikings or, you know, whatever it is that you're interested in. Uh, so uh, I uh, just wanted to bring that up as something that's that's interesting um, about the book culture here and the way that uh, the way that loan words work in language. Um, you know, we've appropriated this because we have some idea that all of the Icelandic all of the medieval Icelander sagas are these big thrilling tales of daring do and, you know, uh, giants and stuff. And there are some that are like that. Um, but the most famous ones are actually quite down to earth, um, and pretty realistic. There's, you know, some of them have some magics, have people who can carve runes or, uh, have the ability to see the future or something like that. But it's pretty, um, it's pretty low key, no pun intended. <laughs> uh, Anyway, so I don't really have any points of grammar or or fun sentences in particular to uh, to point out about this. Um, you know, if you wanted to say, uh, <clears throat> if you wanted to say, uh, you know, that I want a if I want a copy of of the sagas of the Icelanders, um, well, that's a long thing anyway, but. Uh, you uh, would say something like uh, "Mi langer af koipa uh, <clears throat> uh, Islandiga soger," um, you know, which is uh, literally, uh, and this is something I'll talk about in uh, in a video a little later on. Um, uh, "Mi longs," you know, this is like the old timey, like Stanley Mighty Thor dialect. Uh, you know, "Me thinks," uh, it's literally "Mi longs." Uh, to buy the sagas of the Icelanders. So, uh, you know, if you do want to, you know, just wander into a random bookstore and uh, check out these admittedly totally awesome, my favorite things in the world, um, Icelander sagas, uh, you can say that. And then they'll say, we're in, you know, <laughs> we're in Maplewood, son. Why are you uh, speaking Icelandic to me? Anyway, that's the Icelandic thing of the thing of the day. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow, and maybe tomorrow we'll talk about midvoice, which is this methinks thing, um, or maybe we'll talk more about food. I don't know. Anyway, uh, talk to you all later. Uh, Sjælmst. <laughs>